In July 1989, Fawn Cox, just 16, was raped and killed in her own bed in Kansas City, Missouri. According to the police, they have now learned who killed her, according to the local SBC affiliate, KCTV. In July 1989, 16-year-old Fawn Cox was raped and hanged in her own bed in Kansas City, Missouri. Police claimed that up until this point, the teen's murderer had remained at large. After 31 years, everyone learned the shocking truth. If you want to know the truth, stay tuned to the True Crime Network. It is the first murder case that the Kansas City Police Department has successfully solved using cutting-edge genealogy methods similar to those employed in the Golden State Killer investigation. The family of Fawn Cox was housed in a modest two-story home in a rundown area. She started off by helping her parents with the younger kids. She loved swimming and usually attended church. Fawn began working part-time at a nearby theme park when she was just 16 years old. Her family was extremely low income, so the girl tried to use her free time from school to at least make a little bit of money. She worked most of her 1989 summer vacation, selling tickets for amusement rides from behind the cash counter. It was a sweltering, stickly night. Cox, 16, had been working past her bedtime at the Worlds of Fun theme park when her mother, Beverly, picked her up and took her home at 11 p.m. Cox went straight to bed after she got home. She typically slept upstairs with her younger sisters, Ember and Felicia, but on that sweltering night, she was all by herself. That evening, her sister Ember, who was just a year younger than her, was watching children for a well-known family. Because it was significantly cooler on the first floor, Felicia, the other sister, chose to sleep there. The only air conditioner that was operational was downstairs, and it was a very hot night. On the first floor, their parents also slept. The alarm clock in Fawn's room woke up everyone the following morning at around 9, but for some reason, the child wouldn't turn it off. She was assaulted and strangled in her bed by someone who broke into the house through an upper window, maybe by climbing on top of a pickup vehicle. Her bedding had become soiled with semen at some point throughout the night. Her family didn't hear anything below since their powerful air conditioner muffled out any sound from upstairs, and when the family dog started acting strange, they assumed she was pregnant. Then her mother and younger sister went up to her room, where they were greeted by a horrifying scene. Fawn lying dead on her bed. Her younger sister said, come on, get up, as she went over to shake her. Felicia admitted to having been absent for a while from KCTV, a nearby television station. It was early on July 26, 1989. The family would not learn who had committed the crime for another 31 years. After hearing the news, her father responded, The only thing keeping them together is the knowledge that he will be able to spend all of eternity with her at some point, he told to the local newspaper. Her neck had obvious bruises. The girl's parents contacted an ambulance right away because she too had no pulse, but they were no longer able to assist her. It was clear that Fawn had died a few hours earlier. Medical examiners found that the girl had been abused in addition to being strangled as the cause of death. Fawn was killed in her room in a small house with insufficient soundproofing, but the police knew from the start that they were in for a very challenging investigation. There was no word about her parents or sister. There was a reason, though. The first floor's ancient, loud air conditioner drowned out all other noise in the residence. The police officers investigated the scene and found numerous significant items. Their hypothesis was that the assailant had entered the residence through a window on the second floor that looked out onto the backyard. The canopy of the outer building, which was almost level with the window, could be reached by using an old trailer that was parked close to the house. Since there was no air conditioning on the second story, the window itself had been left open to help Fawn deal with the heat. The first significant clues were discovered by the experts. A few short hairs, tiny blood spots, and traces of semen on the bedsheets. This was everything that was delivered to the lab for evaluation. The home was also missing a few items such as some radios, a Nintendo gaming system, and a stereo recorder. Other objects were discovered on the ground in front of the house, and they appeared to have been tossed out the window by the thief to take them with him, but they were left there for some reason. Additionally, the detectives discovered that other items had been taken from a closet in an adjacent room on the second floor. They concluded that the offender was waiting for everyone to fall asleep in the house while lurking in that closet. If you are looking for an alibi, shoot the subscribe button. Kansas City was stunned by this incident, and everyone assumed it would be solved shortly. In August, the police reported the detention of three youths. One was charged with first-degree murder, assault, and other offenses by a grand jury. Following the failure of DNA tests to connect him to the crimes, he was held in prison for eight months before being freed. The charges against the other two adolescents were withdrawn. 
The police persisted in their investigation and followed all available leads, but they were unsuccessful. Every time a breakthrough in DNA testing was announced, Cox's family did not give up. They urged the detectives to apply it in the Fonz case. They donated money and spoke to the media. They bought billboards in Kansas City, and the locals also did not forget of the case. Bus driver Monty Clark, who had previously traveled for Fonz Church, helped with fundraisers and devoted 20 years of his life to studying the case. He told Northeast News, everyone was close-knit and everyone was trying to figure out who and why. There were no outcomes from the search of the Combine DNA Index System, a database containing the DNA of each felon in the United States. The person who killed her was either never put on trial for a crime or is no longer alive. In 2017, Sergeant Benjamin Cardwell spoke to the Kansas City Star. After 30 years, family and friends started arranging raffles and competitions to raise money for another billboard. Fun's face was prominently displayed on a billboard along with the question, Do you know who killed me? It offered a $10,000 reward for information that resulted in the killer's apprehension. We are aware that someone out there is leading a regular life that she was unable to. Fawn never got to grow up and experience life the way we do it now, Felicia said to KCTV. Amber kept a close eye on what people were saying online regarding the case. She would praise the individuals for caring when she saw a true crime website post about the murder of her sister and ask them to use their actual identity if they had any information that could assist the police. Amber acknowledged in March 2020 that she had a murderous obsession with the local television channel, Box 4. I ended up in the hospital because I got too overwhelmed, she continued. She claimed to have always admired Fawn. She aspired to be like her because she was always her defender. The Kansas City Police reported that when sophisticated genealogy testing was made available, they could not quite use it due to its expensiveness. But in the middle of 2020, the FBI started paying for the testing and the case was quickly solved. The police ultimately found and apprehended Fawn's killer on November 11, 2020. According to the Kansas City Police Department, it is the first murder to be solved utilizing cutting-edge genealogy techniques, which have recently proved successful in resolving cold cases such as the case of Golden State Killer. Authorities claim that cutting-edge DNA testing showed that Donald Cox Jr., Fawn's cousin, was the rapist and murderer. He overdosed and passed away in 2016. Since the death seemed strange, the medical examiner looked into it and obtained a blood sample. According to Captain Conwell, who spoke with Northeast News, Fawn's parents were both happy and relieved. They allegedly questioned whether Donald had killed her. Felicia expressed to KCTV how relieved she was at the news. Although the solutions are not always what we anticipate, there is some resolution. These stories always make me so sad because the people in them have their entire lives ahead of them, and then some monster comes along and trashes it all. The family must find it quite difficult to learn that her own relative committed this crime. It is one thing when a stranger is the monster who could commit such an act. It is quite the other when the person who does it is your own relative. Let us know in the comment section down below what you think about this twisted case. If you want more videos like this, make sure to check out our channel for more crime-related content.